Hello, in this video I was going to do a quick overview of how to design a, th a wing to be 3D printed in the lightest way possible. Um, it's going to be split over a few different tutorials. This will be the most basic version and it's the quickest way to do to a wing section but it's also quite heavy in comparison to some of the later ones but it'll give you a good idea of where to start. First thing you need to do is decide on which airfoil section you're using. So I normally use a NACA 2412. If you Google uh, this website, airfoiltools.com, you'll find that there's lots of airfoils. NACA is just one of the most standard ones. And what you actually want to do is go on the full one. Here you go. And then copy this. Don't bother copying this NACA 2412. Just copy from this one. All the way to the bottom copy that then you want to open an excel file paste it in this first column uh doesn't really matter and then these are not actually in two columns we see this is just in the a column and they're only uh different from a space so if you highlight that whole column go on to data next column sorry uh, leave it as delimited and then because there's a space between these two you use space and you can see that it moves it not very well but it moves it into separate columns uh, you can just click finish from here and then you want to keep this so just control x on that to cut it and paste it in the second column Hit the first column and here you have x coordinates y coordinates and for solidworks you also need z coordinates and because it's going to be a flat line, that's just going to be a zero. So just populate this last column with zeros. You have to do this. And then once you've done that, file, save as, browse. This save as type needs to be text tab delimited. And so I normally, when I save this, just save as. Tab. There we go. So you need for this, you need to close up this or SolidWorks is not going to like you. Open up SolidWorks, we'll wait for it to load, and then you want to open a new part in SolidWorks once we wait for that to load. There we go. And let's just bring it back onto the new tab. Um insert, you want to curve, curve through XYZ, that's why you needed the Z. Let's bring this in. Here you go. So you can either paste them in here, but as we have the file, let's just go onto here, desktop, wing, uh, wing. You need to change this file type it's looking forward to dot text. Here it pops up the file we had earlier. And you can see it's in millimeters, so the cord is only one millimeters, but that's fine. Just click OK. And then you can see right in the middle of the screen, very small, it's here. You want to find the plane that it's on, which is normally the front plane. Start a new sketch on there. And then click on the imported airfoil shape. Convert that. You'll see it fully defines it. Hide this original curve, that stops you getting confused. Uh, with either of them so you don't click on the wrong one and then when you click on this you can see there's a green box here this is what's constraining it to the origin so if you just click on that and then click delete you can see that now it's not defined and we can drag it around the next step is because this is not a closed airfoil zoom in on the back choose this tangent tool tangent arc on here tangent arc and then you should just be able to click on the end drag it around and you can see there's a fully enclosed profile. Grab a center line, go from the middle of this tangent arc, zoom out and zoom in somewhere near the front. You can see that it tries to uh, jump to being horizontal. What you actually want to do is go down slightly so it's a bit of an angle. Grab another center line from the end of there, try and auto click it so it goes tangent sometimes it will this time it won't so I'm just going to click click on this line then click on the airfoil 
operations make it tangent. I'm going to hold control, select this line here and this one perpendicular. And now you can see we have a chord line that runs through the center of the wing, which is the most appropriate way of sizing a airfoil. Get your smart dimension tool. Highlight this chord line and now you basically just type in what you want the chord to be. So typically for 3D printing it's 200 millimeters. That. That's fine. And then to uh, constrain this model again, you want to click this point on the very leading edge of the wing and the origin, coincident those. You can see it's still not fully defined, so click on the chord line and click horizontal, and there we go, it's gone black, it's fully defined, that's what we're after. So we can exit this sketch, and there's two ways of doing this. This has to be a surface, so either you can go into surface, extrude the surface, click on this wing, don't forget to click on this extra bit if it hasn't selected, for a extrusion width, and there you can see we have a 3D wing section. Um, that's a very basic way of doing it if you want to completely straight wing, no um, tape or anything. What I like to do, I'm just going to undo that, is give myself a reference plane offset from the front plane. So you can see I've clicked the front plane, offset plane. This is also going to be the span of the wing, so 200 millimeters. I'll select that. Then on this plane, make a new sketch, convert entities, convert the big airfoil section. Don't forget to click on this little tangent because that might not, if you don't click select chain, that might not click. And then you can see that as we zoom out, there's on this first plane, there is the same airfoil section as the original. So let's exit sketch, go on surfaces. And then this time you actually want to do a lofted surface. So between these two surfaces, what you might find is that it doesn't show that it wants to do a loft. And that's probably because here you can see the green dot is on the top of this. And on this one, it's on the bottom. So it's trying to twist the whole model. So if you drag it to the other side, so they match, then you can see it's highlight yellow, click OK. And we have basically the same thing. Two extra steps, but this helps because now you can go into this top sketch and you can either have a different airfoil here or if you go uh, scale entities, entities to scale. So if you choose this airfoil, you can scale about this basic trailing edge to make it half as big, for instance. Here you can see that it's got half as big. If you exit sketch, now you can see very quickly, you can choose this taper. And you can't do that if you just do an extruded surface like this. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to go back to a normal straight um, profile. Right, that's that done. I'm just going to hide this plane. That makes it a bit easier. Save this as it is into um, Four one four model. Right, save that. And we could print this as it is, but obviously there's nothing in the middle. So what we need to do is grab a top plane, new sketch on this, and this is where we basically draw our supporting structure. So either you can draw a main rib like this, then have spars that go across. But because we're 3D printing, we don't need to be constrained by the traditional way of making things. So what I like to do is convert entities, convert the top and bottom of this wing, make those for construction, and then grab yourself a line. Draw yourself what is basically a Angled line, make these parallel, make this bottom section collinear. So this collinear makes this line be in line with this line. So that. Um, 
and you can see that as you pull it along the angle changes what you really want it to be is 45 degrees so 135 from there uh, because that means that when you later move them along then the other side is also 45 degrees so this now if you dimension this this is where it's going to be a bit of trial and error depending on your printer but if you look at your wall perimeter width double it and then add like 0.2 millimeters for instance um you're in a good ballpark, so my extrudes are 0.45 millimeters, so 0.9, so I'm going to be 1.2 millimeters in width for the um, internal support structure. And this wants to be really as small as possible, but still printing two walls rather than one. And now that's basically done. What I'm going to do is just coincident these two pieces together or merge. draw a line down from right, so I drew a line down here which is the length of the span draw myself a center line so if you hover on this line this little dot comes up which is the middle draw that across doesn't need to be anything fancy click on that line and you go on to mirror entities and you click on this middle bit it will select everything and it should mirror oh and there you go it will mirror about that what I also like to do is while I'm here, come in, trim out this middle bit, and that just makes this one piece rather than four, because you have each arm plus the middle. So, okay on that. Fine. Extrude the boss. Uh, mid plane, because the plane that we're drawing on is the center of the airfoil, and if we just do blind, we only get half of the infill. Mid plane, doesn't really matter how big it is, it needs to be bigger than the maximum height of your airfoil but doesn't need to be overly any bigger than that so sort of something nice like that and here we can see we have one cross and the airfoil next thing we want to do is linear pattern so direction one that's going to be if we select this flat edge how many instances I normally have the distance between these 40 millimeters uh it helps if before you do this you click on to features uh, and this boss extrude there we go now you get a more visual representation of what's going on i'm going the wrong way so I click this button turns it around 40 millimeters i normally do is normally yeah quite good at getting an overall approximate approximation of strength to um weight so just extend them until these lines are going across fully finished so here you can see they don't go in anymore so there's no need to do any more than 11. but you can see that as you make this bigger the gaps get bigger which reduces weight but also makes it less strong so you have a bigger gap in the skin and so i found from printing that 40 millimeters or 50 millimeters both are quite good um, I was gonna do 50 for this one click OK and now we can see that we have very ugly but we have cross sections and we have the surface so the good thing about SolidWorks is we can go into surface bodies surface loft and you can see that this is only the skin basically of the aircraft right click that insert into new parts just click OK uh yep change that and it'll come with an automatic prompt of do you want to save this file so yeah i normally just save it as this click save and here we can see that this is only just the skin of the file file save as this is the important bit choose your save as type and then stl and then i normally just append stl onto the end of the file to make it easier save that that's fine. We can then close out of that back into the 
original file, and then closed surface body has gone to solid bodies, linear pattern, same thing, insert into new part. That's fine. Yep. Same thing, save that. Wait for it to finish saving, and then file, save as. Same thing, and STL, change the type to STL, save that. Right, and then that's everything for SolidWorks. So we can come out of there. And what we want to do basically is now open Ultimaker Cure. You can see here's my uh, list of files I have. So because I'm printing mine on a Prusa Mark III S, I have, I'm using a Prusa profile. Uh, just PLA profile and then this wing profile which I'll include as a download so what we want to do is import files this is my air files this is my infill and my surface loft so for most of those you see it's you think oh I can't print that um, click on the one that looks a bit abnormally placed put the X to zero and the Y to zero just make sure they're all zero on the surface make sure they're all zero and this is where the trick comes in if you click on the infill so what is basically the spars and you come down here per model settings and then set mesh type to modify settings for infill of other models you can click slice and then in the preview window once it finishes you can see that all, all the extra bits are taken away you don't need those anymore and what you're left with is the model, which is fully printable now. You can see that all it wants to print is the skin and the outside. And the advantage of doing it this way is you have one complete pass for the skin. You can see that as this comes along, the skin is printed as one piece. And then the infill, which means you don't have any inherent gaps in the skin. This is what I meant when I said make these make this 1.2 millimeters as thin as possible to try and stop this big gap because what you're doing is basically adding extra weight here with these movement passes that you don't need to do. But this will basically print. What you want to do, final thing, is make sure that on each layer that it doesn't start in the same place. And this is a bit difficult because if it does, then you'll find that as the Z gets higher, where there's a because it's only one layer thick, you'll see a big gap where the layers don't meet. So if you go on to search settings and then go to seam, this will depend on your printer. But X, I want it way on the right, and Y, I want this about half. And if we re slice this, this then helps bring the seam to the very trailing edge where it's less noticeable um, uh, I mean it'll take a bit of playing with so it's just basically trial and error find out what works for you it'll be different depending on what print you have there you go so now I'm starting you can see right on the trailing edge and it's much less noticeable and it won't give you any defect there you go there's a 200 millimeter wing section, 63 grams, it reckons, three hours. That's the basic way to have a wing profile. The next video I'm going to do is a wing profile with structured gaps in the middle, and that will reduce this mass to about 40 grams, um, the same, but keeping the same strength. Thanks.